like to call to order the August 23rd, 2016 Zoning Board, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, we'll just jump right to the approval of the minutes of the June 28th, 2016 um, meeting. I would move to approve the minutes of June 28th, uh, 2016 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Second. Any discussion on the motion? I was only here for the beginning part of that meeting, so I'll abstain from the vote if, as long as it'll, it'll still pass with enough members. Uh, I think we have four. Yeah, I think we have enough. Yeah, that's fine. Um, all right, all in favor? All right, the June 28th, 2016 um, minutes from the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting has been approved. Uh, there's no old business, so we'll move on to the one item of new business, which is to hear the request of Jack and Bobby Lucas, owners of the property at 7 Lighthouse Point Road, map U14, lot 36G, to have an accessory dwelling unit above the garage. Mr. Mrs. Lucas, the floor is yours. Seem to be dragged in for a small thing, but um, my name is Jack Lucas. I'm at Seven Lighthouse Point Road, um, Cape Elizabeth. It's my wife, Bobby, and we're requesting a um, very. It's I guess it's more of a conditional use permit for an accessory unit above our garage. Um, this was a house that we built recently, and they room above the garage was on the plans was called a flex room and it, the access is through the mud room goes up it's kind of separated from the house it seemed like a, um, a good use to we wanted to go south for the winter that we could have somebody in the house without actually being in the house um, so that, that's kind of our intent in creating the successory unit Uh, if there's nothing else you'd like to add, I'd just like to open up uh, if the board has any questions of Mr. Lucas. Sure. Uh, who, who do you anticipate will actually be using the unit? Well, right now we don't. If, if we went down, uh, went south for the winter, we would have somebody stay in the house, and that seems like an accessory unit would be a great place where someone can stay in the house without actually being having access to the entire house itself so that's more of the intent of it it's like a mother-in-law and do you anticipate that would be a renter or a family member well or? It, it could be either okay. i mean i'm not i couldn't say that you know that we wouldn't rent it but that was <laughs> our intent right now but um you know it is something that certainly to help with taxes or whatever, that could be something that we would look at. Okay. So, so it's not actually intended to be for a family member, or it's not actually intended to be used except when you are not there. Is that correct? I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't. It's not that. actually intended to be used except when you're not going to be there. Is that? Well, it it could be either. Um, it could, you know, we have we have family that comes out and visits. Um, you know, we have um, our sons, we have family. It would be a, a good place to have family in the house, but not really in the house. So. so in that sense, it's more like a guest room than a rental room? I, I'm sorry, my hearing is pretty I'm bad. sorry, mine isn't any good either. So uh, in that case, it's more like a guest room than a yes, rental it, room? Correct. It, it is. Um, it's a, it's a, it has a separate, it, the access is through the mud room itself and the, the door that goes up to above the garage is at, the, at that location. So it, it's an, a comfortable place where you could have people in the house without actually them being inside the house.
Your, your, uh, your current house in, in your application, it lists that you have an office in your application. You have an office in the house? There, there is one of the bedrooms is an office, yes. Is that for a business or it's just? No, no, that's just my, okay. we don't have a, a call it, because we don't have a bed in there or anything else, I just you know, call it an office. We're not running a business out of the house, if that's the... Um, I notice you're not adding any parking, any additional parking? Well, there's, um, there's two... Sp the parking there, there are two spaces outside of the garage and two spaces inside the garage. So, um, and the driveway is 248 feet, so I think there's room. Any further questions for Mr. Lucas? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, have we received any comments or letters from abutters? We have not. Okay. Uh, any public comment? Yes, sir. My name's Tom Egan, and in full disclosure, I'm the manager of an LLC that's currently litigating against the town of Cape Elizabeth an appeal from zoning board action right now. So, And that has to do with a nearby property, uh, the Bond property. But you're probably familiar with the case, so I won't get into it. So one of the LLCs that I own abuts this property. And it's a non-buildable lot. And um, another piece of property that the LLC owns is Sunrise Drive, which is the right-of-way that abuts this property. Um, I, the only reason why I'm coming here to speak to you in, you know, for my three minutes is because I'm concerned about rental properties. We seem to have a lot of rental properties in our neighborhood. And I'm not saying that the Lucases who have been fine neighbors for as long as they've been there, and they're selling their house now apparently, uh, which I hate to see you go, because <laughs> you've been, you, you did a good job down there. Um, so, so the proliferation of rental properties in our neighborhood is becoming a problem. And I don't know whether this property could be used as a rental property, I'm not an expert in that. Uh, it might be used as a homestay or something. I don't know. But I'm just concerned that the ordinance be observed with respect to this property if it can, could be used not by them but by their successors and in interest in subterfuge as a rental. Because I don't know who is obligated to uh, make certain that rentals, short-term rentals, that law is not abused. So that's the only reason why I'm making a comment. Concerned about the proliferation of rental properties run illegally. It's not the case. I'm not suggesting that would be the case. That is the case with them if they were to build this structure. But their successors and interests might see that $3,000 a week for an accessory dwelling unit above a garage and snap it up. So that's just my comment. Thank you. Thanks. Any other public comment? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm, I'm, am I supposed to, should I identify myself? Yes, please. Okay. My name is Susan Johnston. Uh, my address is 2 Lighthouse Point Road. So I'm around the corner. 
And I also have no problem with them, and I'm sorry to see them go, but I have the same concern. Um, our neighborhood is very much uh, year-round, which was the reason we really wanted to live there. And um, there's already a house on Two Lights Terrace that is renting weekly. And um, I'm sure it's legal. I, you know, I don't know, and I don't even know the people. They bought it, and, but I've seen it on VRBO. And with all of the, this going on, you know, Airbnb and all that stuff, it's becoming the thing. And I would hate to see two lights turn into um, a summer weekly rental property type situation. So that's why I'm concerned. And I, um, I, you know, I miss the beginning and I don't know. And it's probably more of a caretaker apartment or an in-law apartment, but that lends itself very easily to um, being rented. So that's my concern too, and I, and I know that I've read in the paper there's a lot of discussion going on about rental properties, about how, about limiting to not just weekends, that it has to be a week and they have to have enough parking and all that stuff, and so I guess everybody's on top of that, but that's, it's important to me that Two Lights stays um, full time, uh, if possible, you know, within the law. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Don't think we're going to have any other public comment. Um, any further comment from the Lucases? And I don't know because I haven't, um, Jack Lucas. I, is is there a ordinance, a short-term rental ordinance in the town of Cape Elizabeth at this time? I mean, it seems like there, that would be an easy thing or a covenant. Um, our intent is not to, you know, rent this thing on a, on an income basis, like if it's, uh, you know, a, a weekly or something like that. That wouldn't be, it would, if anything, it would be month to month. I don't know if there's deed restriction or whatever that can be done in that way. Question for you, Mr. Lucas, while you're back at the podium. Are, are you folks, in fact, in, uh, currently marketing the property for sale or about to do that? Um, we are. I, um, uh, a little less than a year ago, I was uh, diagnosed with cancer, and um, it became kind of onerous for us um, to be in the house as well as, um, you know, it's, I'm going to kind of go back to where the rest of my family is. Sorry. My wife's roots are here. Mine's, mine are all in uh, Southern California. But we, uh, we, came, we came and my daughter and son-in-law uh, and our grandchildren live in Scarborough. And so we came here on grandparents' duties and really just enjoyed being here when decided we would move and build a home. And so that's kind of a, a quick uh, synopsis of where we are right now in our lives. Sorry to hear about your illness. Thank you. Well, I'm, it's, a, it's a Jimmy Carter type treatment, so I'm looking for the same result. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. I think Ben has a comment about uh, rentals. Yeah, an accessory dwelling unit wouldn't qualify to get a short-term rental permit because an accessory dwelling unit is required to be rented to a, a family member or someone with a close personal relationship with the resident of the house. So if, if someone, if the next buyer of this property came to me and said they wanted to rent this on a short-term basis, asked me for a permit, uh, I, I wouldn't give that permit because, you know, ad advertising something for rent on the internet, you know, would not comply right. with someone being a, a per close personal friend or have some sort of family relationship with the person. Thanks. Um, all right, not hearing uh, any further comments from Lucas's. Um, I'd like to open it up for a board discussion. Well, my only concern is what Ben just said. I mean, the language uh, 
says the close personal relationship. I'm not sure what, I mean, I guess there's a protection in that if you, they have to, you have to get a permit to go to the rental, is that the idea? Yes. Okay, well, I, that it seems to me is kind of the question here. Is, is that adequate or is that okay? <laughs> what we're doing, and the other thing is kind of a technicality, but again, from a, from a precedent point of view, it does say that there needs to be an additional parking, there needs to be additional parking for, you know, the accessory dwellings now in the statute. Now again, if there's perfectly adequate parking, who cares? But I think that's, if I'm reading B5 correctly. Yeah, M Mr. Lucas has uh, four parking spaces and, and then a several hundred foot long drive. That's fine. <laughs> if it meets that requirement, that's fine. I just, it's, so, On a related issue, Ben, can you explain to the board here what happens if uh, that someone notifies you uh, oh, that there's someone renting um, uh, this unit and it's not related to the applicant? What's the process that that goes through? Uh, I, I would ask the applicant to provide me with some evidence that the people renting the apartment have uh, some sort of close personal relationship with them. So there's a procedural process that a concerned citizen can raise the issue and gets dealt with. And that after the, so what's the, what is there a fine or that people just ask not to rent or I guess you can rent to your relative. That's not prohibited. Yeah, but, you're, you're allowed to rent for, for money. You're allowed to collect rent on these units. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just required to be a family member or someone with a close personal relationship. And so that if there is a, a tenant there, that the, the town has a mechanism to force the, the non-relative person out? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would, uh, I, would ask, I would ask the property owner to provide me with that evidence. If they didn't immediately provide me with that evidence, I would issue a notice of violation. Okay. What is the practical protection against this sort of thing happening? In other words, this sounds like a perfect rental situation. It's separate. They could be there or not. It's somewhat separate. Presumably as a separate entrance. Very nice. So these people are perfectly legitimate. Um, what, is, what is the protection against a dozen of these coming in for a relative and they're all rented? I mean, given that you, you know, again, as a zoning board, all we can do is regulate structures. Once the structure is there and it's built, there isn't really, you know, it's, it gets a lot harder to enforce anything as to whether you use it for a garden shed or a bedroom, as we had in earlier conversation. So I guess, the, you know, how do you, how do we protect against the sort of abuse the other gentleman, you know, is concerned about? Well, if, I do check the internet for on several rental websites to try to try to track who's renting in order to enforce the short-term rental ordinance. Uh, and so, if if I find they're advertising, and and most people that are renting on a short-term basis advertise on on one of those popular websites. So I find out that way, or I find out from a neighbor that renting is going on. Uh, Part of the problem that was talked about are, are houses being rented, and we don't have a mechanism to stop that. We, we have a permit procedure for people to be able to do that, uh, and there are some limitations on it. There's, there's limitations on the number of occupants, the parking, uh, the duration of stay. You can only have one tenant per week, so you, so you can't rent it on a nightly basis. So there are some limitations that come with our short-term rental ordinance, but it does allow for dwellings, uh, legal dwellings, to be rented on a weekly basis. Any other board discussion? 
Yeah, well, well certainly I sort of hear the concerns and I share some of the concerns. As I understand it, an accessory dwelling unit would not have a separate entrance, though. Is that right? The, the, or the entrance would be through the main main house. And I don't know, maybe maybe that doesn't prevent you from also providing a, an exterior entrance. I, I don't know. Yeah, there, there is no exterior entrance in this case. Uh, you, you walk into a mud room yep. and there's two doors sure. uh, off of the mud room. Uh, you know, fully conditioned space. Sure. So in this case, I would think it would be at least less desirable, <laughs> you know, as a, <laughs> as a rental, I, as, rather than uh, a yeah. place that might have a, a dedicated entrance. Um, but it's not like you would have to walk through the living room. Right, no, I get it. I, I, to get I, to the I, third bedroom. I mean, sure. The mud room. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. But as far as the requirements for an accessory dwelling unit, I think yeah. this hits every, every single one of them. Um, I, Perfectly, I, you know, I, so. And having this as an accessory dwelling unit would preclude it, the, the whole property from being a short term rental because you, because you have to have a close personal relationship with the person residing in the house. So, so the, the main house couldn't be rented on a short term basis or the apartment. Right. So they, they would, uh, they, they could obviously abandon this approval if they, if they chose to rent it on a short term basis. But, but this sort of setup would, would, you know, I wouldn't issue a short term rental for this property, period. I, I tend to agree with, with Michael that, that I think the application meets all the requirements of 1975B. Um, and I think what the applicants and any subsequent title holders want to be aware of is, is just what we've been discussing, that you don't want to offend sub A, which is the purpose of the ordinance, which talks about that close personal relationship for anybody who occupies those premises. So just a word to the wise, it, if the board were to approve this, we'll see what happens here. Um, I think you'd want to be very careful about how your uh, realtors represent this property when they're selling it so that there aren't subsequent problems with, with how that's handled. Um, it's not something that would want to be advertised as rental opportunities available and the VRBO or whatever, whatever the website is. Um, so I'd, I'd caution you about that, but uh, you know, I would be inclined to, to, uh, to approve this and, and to that extent I'd, I'd be happy to make a motion. Good. I'd move to approve the request of Jack and Bobby Lucas, owners of the property at 7 Lighthouse Point Road, map U14, lot 36G, to have an accessory dwelling unit above their garage at that property. Anybody second? Second. Uh, any board discussion on the pending motion? Uh, all in favor of the motion? All right. It is granted 6 nothing. Uh, findings of fact. This is a request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit above the garage in an existing single family dwelling per section 19-7-5 of the zoning ordinance. Two, the subject property is 7 Lighthouse Point Road, map U14, lot 36G. Jack and Bobby Lucas are the owners of record and currently reside in the house. Three, no expansion or exterior changes are proposed for the house. Additional findings of fact. One, the purpose the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. Three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. And six, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section 19-7-5B of the, excuse me, zoning ordinance. Uh, all in favor of those findings and additional findings? I'm sorry, Chair, may I ask a question just to address the question that Mike raised, whether there should be a reference to subparagraph A for the purposes of purpose, unless you can show um, in the subparagraphs B that the, the relationship, the close relationship, is that, unless I overlooked it, the only reference to close relationship is in 
purpose under A. Um, so you want to add that? I was just in front of the words um, demonstrating compliance with the purpose of section 1975.A and the requirements in section. Why don't we just do 19-7-5 and get rid of its okay. A and B is? Yep. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Jim. So let's. You could also strike five as well if you want, because there is no proposed That's true. external change. Okay. Uh, let's strike five, and six will now read: the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section 19-7-5 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, all in favor of the findings and additional findings? All right. Those have been accepted. Six nothing, and. Thank you. Uh, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. We're adjourned. <laughs> Thank you.